Perfect. Okay, I think the the first thoughts will obviously be about the 40 million um, co-investment. Can you tell us about that and what it means for the African continent? Yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, in terms of being able to provide capital into specifically agriculture in an African context is a massive driver and a massive strategic view um, within Fed Group. You know, we traditionally have invested into agriculture just within our South African borders, and we've been doing it for around 10 years. But part of our strategy was to diversify across our borders because we know of the opportunity throughout the rest of Africa, but we know that it also comes with uh, uh, a plethora of in-country issues, risks, and the like. So our approach was always to look at co-funding with, with another um, financial institution, which we found in the IFU, which is a European DFI. And so key to that strategy was finding the right partners who had operations on the ground, who understood those local environments, so that we could uh, just mitigate some of the risks that we face uh, being a South African entity lending into other jurisdictions. So I think, you know, uh, being able to provide funding that has operations within South Africa, Mozambique and Zambia is also a great diversification strategy, which is why we entered into this partnership with Vedant. Um, you know, that is one of the main attractions in terms of partnering with them uh, on this expansion project. We just got to be able to drive the provision of capital into projects that are not only growing these rural communities around these uh, operations, but also that are looking to actually add value not only to those communities, but also through different types of farming practices that you know take biodiversity into consideration, that they're looking at ways of reducing chemical use, but also looking at ways of, of adding value into these rural communities where we know the opportunities are very low, um, and a lot of the time, these operations are the main job drivers or, or the main drivers of job creation in these areas. So we know that they are critical to the survival of these rural communities throughout Africa. Yeah, and then you spoke a lot about uh, biodiversity. Can you please just uh, tell us a bit more about uh, Fed Group and their commitment to sustainability, sure. as well as how sort of things like the regenerative farming practices uh, sort of aid in that? Around 10 years ago, Fed Group decided we needed to diversify our business away from the core of what we did. And at the time, our uh, CEO identified food security and energy security as two main areas of impact that we want to be involved in. So for us to drive real impact, we, we realized that in the African context, it might be quite nuanced compared to other places in the world. And one of our main drivers is obviously there's the environmental impact, but there's also the social impact. And I guess it's what you call our three P's, which are the principles by which we do business. And that is people, planet, but never at the expense of profit. So we know that sustainability is a combination of all three of those elements that we need to address in terms of uh, the type of projects that we fund in. So driving real life on the ground, uh, tangible impact is a main driver for us. So, you know, um, that's why we perhaps um, we don't classify ourselves as, a, as an ESG company or ESG funds. We classify ourselves as impact investing because we're really looking at not trying to do less harm, but looking at trying to do more good. And one of the best ways of being able to drive impact is through job creation being able to secure jobs for especially the areas in Africa that there's not as much opportunity. And we know a lot of those areas are prime for agriculture. So being able to drive the scalability and the expansion of these projects in those areas is criti critical to creating jobs. But then we also look at, we look for partners that are willing to do something different for the communities. You know, partners that uh, consider education very important. Partners that consider, um, you know, driving micro enterprises in these areas. We also look at how do we bring our energy solutions not only to the projects that we fund in, but also to the communities that we're getting involved in. And you know, Bruce will be able to speak to some really uh, interesting ideas they got and, and th uh, elements that they've done around this. So, be it solar street lighting, be it. Um, building of schools, being it setting up 
beekeeping courses for the individuals from the community and housing our own bees there. That's everything that we're looking to drive impact in the communities. And then around the environment, obviously we're looking at um, regenerative type techniques being deployed in these farms. So things like cover crop utilization or intercropping or being able to drive these uh, areas that are not just industrialized monocropping type solutions, even though we know we need to balance that between commercial viability as well as um, being custodians of the land. And we look for partners that are willing to try that. Um, but also looking at ways of uh, how do these partners utilize different ways of reducing their chemical usage? How do they make use of technology? How can we bring our technology into these projects to be able to help uh, reduce the reliance on artificial import uh, inputs, but also drive management of scarce resources to a degree that we know we are a water scarce country uh, uh, as well as beyond our borders. Water is a critical resource. So looking for guys that take that really seriously in terms of managing the water resource around it because that still forms, forms part of the environment. And then also partners that are looking to perhaps not just extend the expansion of the orchards across the whole farm. We're looking for guys that are still maintaining biodiverse areas whereby we know there is a, an environment for biodiversity to flourish and to actually excel on these projects. So it's a critical element that we look for in the projects. Mm. And then maybe Bruce, if you just want to jump in, particularly on the community upliftment element and sort of the work you guys do about. Yes, I, will. Um, I will do. And I just want to say conversationally, because this is how you want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You know, Warren, Warren, as I hear you talking, you know, it, it just reminds me so much of the reasons why we're doing business with Fed Group. Everything Warren's just said is a full alignment with what we, you know, have have as our strategy, as our vision, as our, you know, our founding principles are very aligned with what Warren's just said. And so that, I believe, is why they've also invested in us is because that alignment is there. And, you know, our other DFI investor partner that's coming alongside Fed Group, they're very focused, particularly on impact and environment and responsibility. So they're very focused on our governance around our responsibility to both environment and social. So that alignment, I just want to point out that the alignment is so, so critical and so strong. Um, we, our vision, um, aside from the commercial side, has been to be able to set up the businesses in these various African countries to prove out the hypothesis that international investors can invest in Africa and have a commercial return on their capital whilst we seek to make a positive social impact. Because many of our original equity investors out of the US were highly motiv motivated by the impact side of it but we needed to prove that they could actually have a positive impact and we could return capital to them commercially with commercial returns. And so that's what we're seeking to prove. And the selection of the orchard crops is also not by accident. We've actually chosen these countries and we've chosen these orchard crops because these are orchard crops that are actually commercially sustainable, exporting, generating forex. They're highly labor intensive, but they're permanent crops. And so they're permanent crops, which means they sequester carbon. Um, they you know, reduce the runoff from the land. And there's so many positive environmental impacts that commercial, sorry, com, you know, permanent crops have compared with a lot of the annual crops that are very mechanizable, but also need massive land areas. So these orchard crops need quite small land areas relative to their, you know, profits or, or margin generation, highly labor intensive. And so it's the labor intensive component that means that we can actually, you know, create decent jobs for people in these communities. And so we've also chosen communities which are deeply rural, where the impact at the lowest levels of sort of economic um, you know, prosperity in society are positively impacted. So we move the needle quite substantially for those people. It is life changing. And so that's the point. It has to be life changing. Mm -hmm. And so the community projects that we're involved in are, um, you know, as Warren mentioned, things like putting up street lights in the community, because some of these rural communities have no lighting and they're quite nervous at night. They can't go outside. They're worried about wild animals and crime and other things as well. Um, putting in boreholes, putting in cattle watering points, putting in dipping stations for cattle. Um, we will be, you know, putting, well, we're busy putting together a project now to start a 
a, a mobile clinic that goes around to some of those rural communities that are actually um, not serviced by any form of you know medical service at all um, and then improving housing as well so starting with our employees but going out to the employees and actually improving their housing as well so looking at how we can actually you know lift their their standard of living through housing improvement and then we monitor that as well over the long term so we've done baseline assessments across our employees and the communities that we're operating in and those baseline assessments gives us a measure of where things were when we started and how things are moving up um, you know over time yeah mm. okay. that's really nice yeah. and i yeah. think just uh touching on uh, africa particularly sub-saharan africa um as you know yeah. it has unique challenges like um things like uh land ownerships and operational difficulties could you maybe just um take us through how fed group has navigated this particularly in mozambique and zambia well i i think it is a, a two-pronged answer because you know, that's why we realize that we need to choose the best in class partners that we're looking to partner, especially on these long term projects. Guys who understand those local environments, guys who have dealt with those issues in those countries as part of their day to day job. You know, being a South African entity lending into other jurisdictions, we go through the full rigorous due diligence process of obtaining expert legal advice, be it in country or uh, from South Africa with officers that are in those countries but really it boils down to that partner that we're backing on the ground there they need to understand that local environment and that is why we're so excited with this partnership with Vedant because they are uh, integrally involved in the in each of those countries they understand the landscape they understand the risks um, and then obviously just in terms of the due diligence process we get in that ticked off uh, throughout the process by external third-party independent um, views on everything that uh, is really a collective effort by all parties involved to address those risks. Mm. Bruce, anything you want to add? Obviously, you're closer to the in-country. No, I, I think what I can say is that we thank Fed Group for the fact that through the due diligence, which is rigorous in a, mm. in a large investment like this, um, they're also able to point out areas that we can improve. And so not only have we been very thorough in making sure that all of the processes have been followed and all regulations are in place and all documentations in place, et cetera, but through their through third party reviews as well, they've been able to pick up things that we can actually improve on as well. And so that actually collaborates uh, very nicely to an improvement in terms of the reduction in execution risk and, um, and uh, you know, a stronger partnership. Mm. And then maybe yeah. just, Bruce, could you tell me more about Vedant and sort of the expertise you bring to this project? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lindy. So first and foremost, Verdant Frontiers, we've operated across. So Verdant Frontiers is our holding company in the U.S. Mm. You'll, you'll see that logo above me on the right yeah. here. So Verdant Frontiers, the holding company. Verdant Orchards is our agricultural division within Verdant Frontiers. And so we've operated in Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Uga uh, Ghana, Mozambique, Zambia, and South Africa. So we've got regional experience. So it's the, it's, it's the sort of cross Africa experience that's actually relevant in terms of an ability to operate businesses in these diverse African countries. And then within the agricultural portfolio, we've got experts in finance, experts in agriculture, and experts in operations across these countries. So we've got a, you know, a, a good um, exec team, and then we make sure that we have good, strong partnerships on the ground and good, strong employees on the ground who have specific operational expertise within the crops that we've actually you know, invested in. Um, and so it's that experience across both Africa and the actual operations and the, the crops that we're producing that's very important. So it's those multi-layers. And then actually part of this transaction has been the acquisition of a marketing company. And so that marketing company links us very nicely with international markets at the same time. So we've brought marketing expertise in through this acquisition as well. Yeah. Mm, and then I think this yeah. next question is for the both of you. Can you tell me how sort of this partnership uh, what role it plays in your long-term strategy and what are sort of your future plans from this partnership? Sure. Shall I go first, Warren? Yeah, yeah, go um, for it, Bruce, and then I'll add on. From, from an orchards, verdant orchards perspective, we see ourselves not stagnating at this level. We're going to keep growing. So we have a view to getting our production to over 5,000 hectares over the next 10 years. And that's orchard area that's not total total sort of land area so productive orchards over 5,000 hectares which would make it a very significant player in the orchard production 
uh, crops from this region. But it's not just a South African strategy. It's a multinational strategy across this region. And so currently with Mozambique, Zambia and South Africa in the portfolio, we'll more than likely expand into at least one additional African country as well as we expand that footprint. We're also going to expand from the citrus and the avocados into one of the nut categories as well. And so it'll probably be macadamias. And then we're going to grow the footprint within the citrus sort of portfolio as well. And so that means that we've got diversification across the country and across the various crops. And so that's a very important strategy. Um, and, and so we see it as being a permanent capital, long-term investment without a specific exit strategy. And so we're going to you know, be, be making a long-term impact, both in terms of the environmental and the social uh, aspects of the business. Yeah, Bruce, I think once again, such great alignment between our two organizations, you know, in terms of um, the strategic value for us is obviously um, deploying into assets that are throughout Africa. So we can diversify our risk of, you know, sovereign risk, of location risk, of geographical risk. But also in terms of how we go about doing business, we look at diversifying into the sectors within agri. So just like Vedant is looking at Citrus, Avas, and possibly Max, you know, we follow a very similar strategy in, in our world that we know, you know, agriculture follows peaks and troughs. So it goes, it has good years and it has bad years. And for us to generate a commercial return for our investors, for our shareholders, as well as for our partners, we need to be able to have this diversification strategy. I think a critical element of diversification is also the source of funds of how we invest in, into these projects. So developing a relationship with a European development bank is one of the key strategic ob uh, objectives within Fed Group so that we can start attracting foreign capital to also help accelerate the growth and accelerate the impact that we're able to have in an African context. So look at ways of how do we start bringing the cost of capital of doing business where there's normally seen, uh, there's, a, there's a view to a risk premium that needs to be uh, added into deploying capital in African context. But through proper partnerships and proper de-risking mechanisms and alignment of strategy, we can look at bringing that cost of capital down and opening up the African co uh, continent to these large inflows from large multinational companies that are looking to deploy into these projects that have lasting impact. You know, uh, we focus predominantly on orchard type crops, or maybe a better way to phrase it is uh, more permanent type crops. So, so we, we do, don't really provide funding into these annual type crops or commoditized type, type crops. We're in it for the long term at the same time as well. So entering a partnership with somebody like uh, Verdant Orchards leads into our strategy because we know those citrus trees can produce um, uh, for up to you know anywhere from 25 to 35 years. There's some trees in the areas that um, Bruce uh, currently operates that you know are perhaps 40 years old and still producing at a commercial level. So it's definitely a, a long-term strategy of creating true value for all parties involved. And we apply that same strategic view across other sectors that we've chosen to get involved in. But I think this partnership with Vedant that has led to a, an international co-funder is the, one of the ones that excite us the most. Mm -hmm. And then earlier, Bruce, you mentioned three of my favorite things, citrus, avos, and nuts. <laughs> um, can you just tell me maybe more about how difficult it is to, to um, secure funding for projects like this? Um, first and foremost, you know, our, our early capital has come out of the U.S. And those uh, were predominantly high net worth individuals that really just wanted to make a difference. And so they were although they you know we needed to prove that they could actually receive a return on their capital they really want to make a difference and yeah. so it's it's off the basis of that and so that really is our mandate is to make a difference in both people's lives and develop communities around these operations and that is actually developing that micro economy um, and so it's not easy to attract capital to africa when you're starting from scratch especially mm. when the businesses haven't yet proven themselves. So early startup capital for, for greenfields type operations is difficult to actually achieve. Um, once you start to get to scale and have proof of concept and proof of delivery, it, it starts to snowball, it starts to become self-fulfilling. 
And we've got to the point now where we've got a foundation in place, having put together the business strategy, having put together the portfolio, where the more structured uh, institutional, you know, international investors, Fed Group, IFU and the likes, become interested in investing in the businesses as they mature. But Africa is a, a difficult place to in, attract capital to if you're talking mm -hmm. about um, early stage startup or, or, or deeply rural type investments in less developed parts of Africa. Very difficult to attract capital. Um, and of mm -hmm. course, we know at the same time that the potential is there. So for us, it's not about um, developing that potential. The potential's there. Africa's potential's mm -hmm. there. It's about proving that potential. It's about, you know, um, yeah, delivering on what's already there, but putting it together and, 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 you know, putting the business together that actually can deliver on the potential that exists. Because the resources mm -hmm. are there, the people are there, the competitive advantages that Africa have are there. Those competitive advantages in international markets which are in our sector at least it's counter seasonal supply to regions that can't get these products during our window of supply and so mm. it's making sure that we actually capitalize on the potential that's already there mm. Mm, that's yeah. lovely yeah. and then just to both of you obviously finding a partnership is a difficult thing you have to go through a lot sort of were there any requirements um either company was looking for and how did you end up finding each other yeah, thanks, Bruce. Happy I, I, I take it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the areas that we spend most of our time uh, unpacking and out in front of people, really trying to, to get to know the various operators that are out there. So a large part of the due diligence, and I just want to thank the lead uh, deal maker on this uh, Vedant Orchards transaction, Justin Wilkes, you know, just the expertise and the knowledge and, and the drive to get a transaction done, I think is what allowed this transaction uh, to occur. Just that bringing together an African context um, view or lens uh, to an international funder is normally a stumbling block in a lot of these transactions. They'll see an element that from operating in Africa, we inherently understand because we're exposed to it every day of our lives. But somebody coming from Europe, this is a totally new area to them. They've never been exposed to these type of risks. And a lot of the time that shuts down a deal before it uh, even gets started. So I think being able to, in terms of the operators, find partners that are professionals on the ground that have corporatized uh, businesses or at least good corporate governance within their business and are looking to make a difference is one of the main critical elements. And then also bringing our skill set to these type of transactions, understanding agriculture really, really inherently, understanding the cash flow cycles needed in the different crop types, understanding the risks and challenges that these tenacious farmers have to go through and address on the ground. Um, you know, we understand that inherently. A lot of our guys have farming backgrounds with uh, financial backgrounds. Uh, we try get out onto the farms as often enough. We really look at trying to add value to the partnerships that that we enter into and beyond just the provision of capital capital is always the first part of a transaction and possibly the most difficult but once that capital is deployed then the real work can start then how do we accelerate the impact how do we accelerate uh, or improve the yields and quality how do we um, get vertical integration into these companies and help them unlock value not just for themselves but for Fed Group, um, as well as the communities uh, in these projects. If I can add to what Warren's just said, um, you know, thinking about the, the different relationships between Fed Group and IFU, which is our other international funder and ourselves. Um, IFU had confidence in our ability to execute, but didn't have an ability to really appreciate the dynamics of the risks and, and mm -hmm. how, how the deal should be structured and how they should, you know, um, assess risk. And what Fed Group brought, brought to the deal was a very, very sweet connection between ourselves and IFU. IFU were really interested in doing a deal. We needed capital and we had a strategy. But sandwiched in the middle was Fed Group who had an appreciation for our ability to execute the business and an appreciation for the inherent risks of operating in the region and who could actually um, satisfy IFU in terms of their being able to have confidence 
that IFE, uh, Fed Group's assessment of these risks was something they could back because Fed Group was also putting money into it, but could at least calm IFU down and say, look, chaps, this area of risk that you're concerned about is really a non-event. Whereas, you know, we think that these might be the risks, let's address those and let's, let's you know, deal with how, you know, how, how we can quantify those particular risks. And so brought some sensibility to it because they have experience in Africa, in Southern Africa, from a financing point of view, we have the experience in agriculture and IFU really just needed confidence to be able to mm. get over the line and close the deal. Mm. And so it was that, it was that provision of, of a, I, I think, a, you know, bringing sensibility to the deal in terms of the regional experience was what Fed Group could do. And so it was actually very instrumental in terms of closing this transaction. Mm -hmm. And then just yeah. before we wrap up, um, yeah. so initially when I was doing my research, I thought I'd angle this around sort of the 40 million investment. But after talking to you, gentlemen, I think the biggest thing is impact. So I yes. want to ask you, so what... So. What impact would you like to leave these communities with through agriculture? Well, I'd, I'd like to say that firstly, these businesses that we're creating are permanent businesses. They, they need to be around generationally. And as they're around generationally, it's going to mean that the people that live around these businesses have firstly long-term quality employment. Through that employment, they will develop skills. Through that employment, they will rise through the ranks of those businesses. Through that employment, money will be spent in those communities. So those communities will actually see a living standard change. We already see that. And so when you walk through the streets of those villages, you should physically see the difference in the streets of those villages over time. And so that's a, it's a generational impact. And it's going to generate, you know, impact the next generation. The children of the people that live there need to have seen the difference. And have you know have been employed through those businesses or been sent to school as a result of those businesses or have been sent to university as a result of those businesses so that that you know direct life you know life-changing impact needs to have been there generationally and that's what we'd really like to see as a legacy brilliantly put bruce and 100 percent agree with that i think perhaps all i can add to that is at the end of the day especially in agriculture we are custodians of that land we the land will be there long before uh, you know a lot much longer than we are and being able to bring different ways of getting that land to generate income that is generational but at the same time leaves the land intact leaves the environment in a better position than we found it not having chemical runoff not you know blasting uh, all the biodiversity and killing all the life around these projects we have to find ways of doing things differently of leaving the land in a better place than we found it. And through key partnerships like Vedant, where they utilizing some of these different types of techniques, bringing organic inputs onto the farms to replace some of the chemical inputs, I think that's part of the, the legacy that we want to leave behind. So that the communities have these operations in their communities that help drive the 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 growth of the communities and the standard of living, but also that help drive the health benefits of the, envir of the environment around these communities. Those communities are, are very at risk and susceptible to any overuse of chemicals and or any you know, corporate, uh, any governance around chemicals. And we want to find ways of preserving the biodiversity for these communities, but also for future generations so that we don't just strip the land of, of everything it's worth and uh, leave a desert behind us in our wake. So I think it's a critical element in terms of the legacy that we want to leave behind. It's once again that, that three-pronged approach to how we go about doing business. You need to consider the people, you need to consider the planet, and you need to consider the ability to generate profits because that's what makes the world go around. Mm -hmm. And then in closing, gentlemen, is there anything else you'd like to add? I think you covered a lot of great, great points. Yeah. You know what? International relations with our neighboring countries um, and, and um, trade relations with our neighboring countries is critical to the improvement mm -hmm. of the business environment for these countries. We see that there are significant areas that can still be improved with regard to import and export of these, these um, you know, the, these commodities between the regions. Um, a, a much more free market environment is still needed. Yeah. Um, we mm -hmm. see barriers to trade, and those barriers to trade are areas that our Ministry of Agriculture, et cetera, can work on. 
because the exports out of Zambia into SA or exports out of Mozambique into SA are still quite curtailed, whereas the exports out of SA into those countries is much freer. And so we think that that actually can improve, and it's something that our Ministry of Agriculture can work on. And so as a comment, I feel that we can still do better as a country in terms of supporting our neighboring countries. Brilliantly put, Bruce. I think what a, you sparked a thought. I think we have to, especially from a, a, a financial institution viewpoint, we need to find ways of being able to catalyze capital into these type of projects and into the continent as a whole. And just as we look for key partners in terms of a Dant or somebody like an IFU out of, out of Europe, we need to drive collaboration and partnership with public, with private, with operators, with funders, and we need to create an environment of engagement that we can break down these barriers that Bruce uh, is talking about. But only through collaboration and partnership can we achieve this. And I think, uh, you know, as a corporate citizen, we have a responsibility to help drive that type of uh, communication and really try engage with the various authorities and uh, various governments and and say we, we're ready for business, we want to expand, there is uh, international money ready for it, let's break down those barriers, let's work together and let's unlock the, the true African value that, uh, that is on our, uh, on our doorstep. Yeah. And uh, maybe there's just one more point to emphasize. I, mean, I know we've spoken about international capital, but just let, let's just think for a moment about the significance of international capital. The agricultural sector has had some difficult times um, there have been difficult times with regard to some fear internationally with regard to things like land tenure and the stability of our economy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, those, those, those concerns are out there. And this transaction is a milestone, in our opinion, with regard to international support for the fact that if we get it right, um, there's money available and there's money available to grow the sector. But we need to have an environment where the sector is stable where the sector can be productive, where the sector is actually seen to be a, you know, a solid destination for an investor's capital to be, you know, to be placed uh, with confidence, because it's such an important sector. It's such an important sector for not just the country in a macro scale, but it's also such an important sector for those people that yeah. are really at the bottom tiers of society in terms of their economic status. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah.